Greetings, seekers of knowledge. Today's journey takes us to a land steeped in history, culture, and hearty pierogies. We're talking about Poland. Poland's narrative begins around the year 966 AD with a baptism. Not just any baptism, mind you, but the baptism of a ruler, Misko I. This event marks the establishment of Poland as a recognized state within Christendom. Fast forward several centuries and we find ourselves in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth era. Imagine, if you will, a time where democracy flourished and religious tolerance was the order of the day. A golden age of sorts where the seeds of intellectual and philosophical thought were sown. Alas, good things often come to an end and so it was with the Commonwealth. It was partitioned not once, not twice, but thrice by its rather ambitious neighbors, Russia, Prussia and Austria. A time of trials and tribulations indeed, but also a time that saw the birth of a national awakening. 20th century Poland was a roller coaster ride. Two world wars, occupations and uprisings, yet through it all the spirit of the Polish people remained unbroken. This period also saw the emergence of some of Poland's most profound philosophers, thinkers who dared to question, to challenge and to inspire. In the aftermath of the Second World War, Poland found itself under Soviet influence until 1989, when it finally shrugged off the shackles of communism. Today, Poland stands proud as a member of the European Union, embodying resilience and progress. Throughout these historical ebbs and flows, Poland's intellectual and philosophical landscape was continually shaped and reshaped. Each era brought forth thinkers who reflected upon the human condition, pondered existential questions and sought to understand the world around them. With a rich history that's had its share of triumphs and tribulations, Poland has been a fertile ground for deep thinkers and philosophers. Let's meet them, shall we? Before we dive into the philosophical pool, let's dip our toes in the shallow end with the early Polish philosophers. These are the chaps who kicked things off, the pioneers who dared to ask the big questions during the medieval period. So don your chainmail, grab your quill, and let's journey back to a time of knights, castles, and a whole lot of philosophical pondering. First up, we have Stanislaw of Skarbimius. Now, Stanislaw wasn't just a man of the cloth, he was a man of thought. A cleric and a scholar, he was one of the early birds of Polish philosophy. He was particularly interested in ethics and theology, and his most famous work, On the Duty of a Prince, was a groundbreaking exploration of moral responsibility in leadership. Stanislaw argued that a ruler's duty is to serve the common good, not just their own interests. A novel idea at the time, and some might say still a work in progress. Next, we have Paul of Wursin. Now, Paul was a bit of a rock star in the philosophical world of the 15th century. He delved into the metaphysical, the moral and the divine, pushing the boundaries of thought and understanding. His most significant work on the soul and its powers was a deep dive into the nature of the soul and its relationship with the body. Paul posited that the soul is not just a spiritual entity, but also a rational one. These early philosophers were not just thinkers, they were trailblazers. Their ideas and theories laid the groundwork for the philosophical discourse that followed. They dared to question, to explore, and to challenge the status quo. Each in their own way, they contributed to the rich tapestry of Polish philosophy, and their influence can still be felt today. So, our philosophical journey begins with the medieval era, laying the foundations for future thinkers to build upon. But hold on to your hats, folks, because we're just getting started. Next stop, the Enlightenment era. Prepare to have your minds enlightened, or at least thoroughly confused. Fasten your seatbelts, philosophy enthusiasts, as we catapult ourselves into the Enlightenment era. As the 17th century was drawing to a close, a new era was dawning, one that would be marked by revolutionary ideas and transformative thinkers. Among the luminaries of this period, two Polish philosophers stand out, Stanislaw Leszczynski and Hugo Kolotaj. Both were men of erudition and profound vision, their minds ablaze with the Enlightenment's ideals of reason, liberty, and progress. Stanislaw Leszczynski, the philosopher king, if you will, was a man who wore many hats. A statesman, a writer, and a philosopher, he championed the democratic principles that were the bedrock of the Enlightenment. His views on governance were groundbreaking for his time, advocating for a system where the power was vested in the people, not the monarch. Then we have Hugo Kolotaj, who was as much a social reformer as he was a philosopher. 
He was a staunch advocate for education and believed in a society where everyone, regardless of their social standing, had access to knowledge. This belief was reflected in his work, where he emphasized the importance of education in shaping a democratic society. But their influence wasn't merely confined to the realm of philosophy. Their ideas, their visions, were instrumental in shaping one of the most significant documents in Polish history, the Constitution of May 3rd, 1791. This enlightened document, deeply influenced by the philosophies of Leszczynski and Kolotaj, was the first constitution of its kind in Europe, embodying the principles of political equality and personal freedom. These enlightened thinkers not only shaped philosophy, but also left an indelible mark on Poland's political landscape. Their legacy, their ideas, still reverberate in the corridors of power and the annals of philosophy, reminding us that philosophy isn't just about abstract ideas, but about the profound impact these ideas can have on the real world. Let's time travel to the 19th century, a period of national awakening, and meet some philosophical heavyweights. Picture this. The year is 1838. A young man named August Czyskowski is about to turn the world of philosophy upside down. Fresh from his studies in Heidelberg and Berlin, Czyskowski introduces post-Hegelian thoughts to Poland. He's not just churning out a few academic papers here and there. Oh no, this chap is taking the philosophical world by storm, penning works like Prolegomena to Historiosophy that challenge the very concept of history and philosophy's role within it. The audacity. Czyskowski's ideas of action replacing pure thought as the driving force behind history and philosophy were revolutionary, to say the least. He believed that human action, not abstract thought, would bring about a new era of spiritual and social transformation. A bit like swapping out a horse-drawn carriage for a steam-powered locomotive, just a tad more complex. Now let's jump forward a few decades to the 1860s. Enter stage right, Henryk Kamienski, a man with a mission to propagate positivism in Poland. Just when you thought philosophy couldn't get any more exciting, Kamienski comes along shaking up the status quo. He's advocating for empirical inquiry and scientific knowledge over metaphysical speculation. In layman's terms, he's essentially telling everyone to quit navel-gazing and start examining the world around them. Kamienski's take on positivism wasn't just about putting science on a pedestal. It was also about using scientific principles to improve society and address social issues. Imagine trying to solve a Rubik's Cube using only gut feelings and guesswork. Kamienski would rather you follow a methodical approach, scrutinizing each move and using logic to figure out the solution. These philosophers, with their profound thoughts, played a pivotal role in shaping Poland's intellectual identity. The 19th century was indeed a time of national awakening for Poland, and philosophers like Czyskowski and Kamienski were the alarm clocks, rousing the nation with their groundbreaking ideas. Together, they helped to lay the philosophical groundwork for the Poland we know today. And for that, we tip our hats to them. Next stop, the 20th century, a period of turbulence and transformation, but also a golden age for Polish philosophy. Let's kick off this journey with Tadeusz Kotobinski, a man who looked at the chaos of the world wars and said, I think I'll do some philosophy. He was the father of praxeology, the study of human action. Now, that might sound like a fancy term for people watching, but it's a bit more than that. Praxeology seeks to understand the nature of action, its efficiency, and its moral implications. It's like watching people, but with a lot more thought. Kotarbinski gave us the concept of effective action, which is a fancy way of saying doing things right. He argued that efficiency isn't just about speed or elegance, but about achieving our goals with minimal effort. So, if you've ever felt proud of yourself for ordering takeout instead of cooking, you've got Kotobinski to thank for the philosophical justification. Next, we have Roman Ingarden, a philosopher who dared to ask the big questions like, what is existence and is this chair really a chair? He was a major figure in phenomenology, a branch of philosophy that tries to understand the structures of experience and consciousness. In simple terms, it's the study of how we perceive and experience the world. In a time when the world was at war, Ingarden was pondering the nature of art, music, and literature. He developed the idea of ontological regions, a concept that helps us understand how different forms of art create different realities. If you've ever lost yourself in a good book or a captivating painting, 
you've experienced the magic of ontological regions. The 20th century philosophers not only navigated through tumultuous times, but also used it as a catalyst for philosophical evolution. They looked at a world in chaos and saw an opportunity to understand human nature, to question our reality, and to explore the depths of our consciousness. They remind us that philosophy isn't just about big ideas and abstract concepts, but about understanding our place in the world, especially when that world is in turmoil. Finally, we arrive in the present, where the philosophical torch is carried by modern Polish philosophers. Let's dive into the minds of two such thinkers, Leszek Kolakowski and Zygmunt Bauman. First up, we have Leszek Kolakowski. This man was not just a philosopher, he was a historian of ideas, a critic and a theorist. Often he was seen as a philosophical heretic, challenging the established norms. Kolakowski was instrumental in the critique of Marxist thought, taking it apart piece by piece in his magnum opus, Main Currents of Marxism. His work was a key catalyst for the intellectual revolt against communism in Poland in the late 20th century. He was a firm believer in the value of human freedom and his work is a testament to the power of critical thinking. Moving on, we encounter Zygmunt Bauman, another intellectual giant of our times. Bauman was a sociologist more than a philosopher, but his work has philosophical roots, particularly in postmodern thought. He is best known for his concept of liquid modernity, an era in which social forms and institutions no longer have enough time to solidify. This results in a society where individuals are left to struggle with the fluid and uncertain conditions of their lives on their own. Bauman's work is a fascinating exploration of the human condition in the modern world. He grapples with themes of power, freedom and identity, dissecting the complexities of our rapidly changing societies. His work is a mirror reflecting our own lives, offering insights into the challenges and paradoxes of living in the 21st century. In their respective fields, both Kolakowski and Bauman have made significant contributions, influencing not only Polish thought, but also the wider world of philosophy and sociology. These modern philosophers continue to push the boundaries of thought ensuring Poland's vibrant philosophical tradition lives on. After this whirlwind tour of Polish philosophers, one might ask, so what? Well, let me enlighten you. The impact of Polish philosophy on the global stage is as rich as a pierogi platter and just as varied. From the heart of Europe, Polish philosophers have been busy bees pollinating the world's thinking hive with their unique ideas. Their influence is far reaching, extending into the realms of ethics, politics and sociology. In ethics, Polish philosophy has been a veritable lighthouse guiding the moral compass of humanity. It was the Polish philosopher Tadeusz Czesowski who promoted the concept of positive realism, emphasizing the importance of moral values and human dignity. This perspective has been instrumental in shaping contemporary ethical thought. On the political front, philosophers like Leszek Kolakowski have left an indelible mark. Kolakowski's critique of Marxism has been a guiding force in the fight against totalitarian regimes. His work has provided the intellectual ammunition for countless individuals and movements striving for freedom and democracy. In the field of sociology, Zygmunt Bauman's concept of liquid modernity has been a game changer. His idea of a society where everything is in a constant state of flux has profoundly influenced how we understand and navigate our increasingly complex, globalized world. But let's not forget about the Lao Warsaw School of Logic. This group of Polish philosophers led by Kazimierz Stwardowski revolutionized the field of logic and philosophy of language. Their contributions have been so significant that they've been compared to the likes of Aristotle and Kant. Talk about punching above your weight. Polish philosophy has not just been a series of isolated thoughts, but a vibrant dialogue that has enriched global philosophical discourse. It has challenged us to question our assumptions, broaden our perspectives and strive for a more thoughtful, humane world. Polish philosophers, with their profound thoughts and revolutionary ideas, have left an indelible mark on the world's philosophical landscape. Before we bid adieu, let's quickly recap our philosophical journey. We started off in the fertile intellectual fields of Poland, where philosophy was not just a hobby, it was a lifestyle. 
We met the early philosophers, those daring thinkers who dared to question the status quo, to challenge the accepted norms and to propose radical new ideas. Their contributions laid the groundwork for the Enlightenment era, a time of great intellectual growth and development in Poland. During the Enlightenment, Polish philosophers were at the forefront of progressive thought. They challenged old ideas, proposed new ones, and greatly contributed to the rich tapestry of philosophy. They were the torchbearers of the Enlightenment, lighting the way for future generations of thinkers. The 19th century brought about a time of national awakening. Polish philosophers were instrumental in this awakening, using their intellectual prowess to help shape a new national identity. They played a crucial role in defining what it means to be Polish, helping to forge a strong sense of national pride and unity. The 20th century, a time of turbulence and upheaval, saw Polish philosophers rise to the occasion. They provided guidance and insight in times of uncertainty, offering a beacon of hope and reason amidst chaos. Their philosophies helped navigate the tumultuous waters of the 20th century, from the horrors of war to the challenges of the modern world. We then journeyed to the present day, where modern Polish philosophers continue to make significant contributions to the world of philosophy. They are pushing the boundaries of thought, challenging conventional wisdom, and proposing exciting new ideas. Their work is not just confined to academia, but has real-world implications, affecting the way we live, think, and interact with the world around us. And with that, we conclude our journey through Polish philosophy. Remember, philosophy is not about finding all the answers. It's about asking the right questions. Until next time, keep questioning.